Oh hi there, I'm Black Bright. I did a um, I did a video earlier about this same topic, and then I realised after I did it that maybe I shouldn't have said something. So I'm having to do it again. So apologies to those of you who saw the first video and who enjoyed it. I don't know if this one's going to have the same, you know, shabazz, but hey. Um, that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes it's best to redo something rather than produce something and then you can get in trouble for it afterwards. So basically, this is about Robert Buckland. Is that his name? Yeah, Robert Buckland, QC. He wants to put in, um, he wants to have a two-tier system with regard to um, suspects who have been um not charged at the point, but suspected of criminal offences. And this is because Chris, Cliff Richard and Gabaccini, they were accused historically of sex offenders and they were found to be innocent. Now, the problem with what he's saying is that he's only going to anonymise those who do not have a reputation to be worried about. In other words, he's going to anonymise the rich, the famous and the wealthy or the celebrities is, but the regular John Joe will not have, they will not be anonymized because as far as he's concerned, they don't have a reputation to tarnish. What a bloody cheek. What about people who have been taken out of their homes and had have cars, police cars outside, beating down their doors, neighbours watching, dragged off to the police station, have mugshots, fingerprints, only to be released the next morning and said, oh, you know, well, you know, it's we've got the wrong person or the allegation was false. What about people like that? When they go back, there'll always be a question mark over their heads. Their neighbours will be wondering why so many police came and kicked off the door, why you were taken away in handcuffs. They don't care about um, what you come back and tell them. There's no open apology. The police don't go around to the neighbours and say, look, we, um, we, uh, we knocked on their door, we beat down their door, uh, we carried off so-and-so, um, it was a mistake. Um, you know, there's nothing to worry about. Nobody does that. That individual is left to sort it out themselves and to carry that humiliation and that suspicion that's kind of hovering over their heads, the embarrassment. They're left with the tarnish of their reputation, which you cannot get back regardless. And if you move, it follows you. What about young black boys who have been accused, falsely accused of rape? They can't even get a job. What about them? They'll be released on the streets. They, you know, they'll be released back into the community if they're lucky. A lot of them are beaten up. A lot of them, some of them are killed. Some of them are tortured because God forbid if they raped a white woman or allegedly raped a white woman. When I looked, when I googled um, black men accused of rape, you know what came up? False allegations. A list of false allegations and that film um, called When We See Us, When They See Us. Because when they see us, they have this stereotype. So what about those people being anonymised? They're not. And what makes me puke is that the judge has got the nerve to say that he's worried about people being bullied, you know, Human Rights Act. And yet he must know that if a black man is accused of raping a white woman, his life is in danger. And yet they don't anonymise him. He's left to go out there. He's left to be killed. He's left to be, you know, might as well forget about him. What about Emmett Till? Lynched him. So, you know, it's it's not that straightforward. You can't have, if, if you're going to anonymise people for serious crime, you anonymise everyone. No one's better than the other. If, they're, if they've been accused, they've been accused. And the funny thing, it was well, not even the funny thing is, um, let me just see what I wanted to read here, because I can go on forever. 
but the College of Policing guidelines currently advise officers not to publish suspects' names until they are charged, but it does not stop them from being identified by other means. It's like when things get leaked. What about that guy in, um, in government who's, who said something about Trump? And it got out. So nothing is sacred. Anyway, let me just read this quickly. Um, I've kind of said my little bit. Um, Robert Buckland QC was asked if he supported the campaign to ban the naming of those arrested on suspicion of rape and other sexual offences, which has been led by Sir Cliff Richard and the radio presenter Paul Gambaccini, both falsely accused of historical sex offences. Buckland said, let's say you are a reputable local business person who is accused of fraud. Your good name is going to be really undermined by this mere accusation. You are a person of good character. That might be a meritorious case for anonymity. So what he's saying, you know, if, you, if you're a business person and people know you, yeah, you warrant being anonymized. But the regular John Joe doesn't as though they don't have a family they don't have a spouse who's embarrassed who's been humiliated who's been degraded by false accusation i mean how classist is that while advocating anonymity until charged for those accused of sexual offences, fraud and other unspecified serious crimes, suspected suspects of sex crimes should be anonymous. Nonetheless, says that anonymity would be less justifiable for those with damaged reputations. So what they're saying is that, OK, God forbid you've got a, a, a crime, you've got a previous record. You don't worry. You don't warrant having your reputation preserved. So you don't have to be anonymized. The thing is, they have they don't want this to go out because they want black people's faces on the TV screen convicted of rape or accused of rape, whether they're guilty or not. They want to keep that stereotype in focus. So when people think about black men, they think about them as animalistic, they think about them as rapists, they think about them as sex offenders. So that's why they don't want to anonymise them. And they can't afford for this to go through because it would spoil all their plans. To, to you know, they, they want to keep up this, ste this negative stereotype. A lot of people do. So that is why I believe, that's just my opinion, Suspects accused of serious crimes, including sex offences, should be granted anonymity if they have a reputation to protect. We all have a reputation to protect. As much as I'm just a regular person, I have a reputation to protect. I don't want a, a load of police knocking on my door. What would my neighbours think? They think, bloody hell, we don't want to associate with her. What's she been up to? She's probably um, trafficking drugs. You know, they think about the worst. And whether or not they cart me off and put me in a cell and let me out the following morning, that is going to taint my reputation. They're always going to remember. And when they talk about me, oh, it was that woman. Did you see all those police cars? Did you see all those police go in and get her? Did you see them take her in the police van? Did you see? I wonder what she did. Oh, I bet she couldn't be up to any good. Oh, I don't think I'll associate with her from now on. I thought she was a nice person, but oh. That's what you get. A question mark. Your, your reputation is tainted. So whether you're a saint or a sinner, whether you're a king or a peasant, you still have a reputation that you want to preserve. Um... They want to create a two-tier system that protects one sector and exposes another, and we all know who falls into that category. The law should be fair regardless of who you are, how much you earn, regardless of wealth, status and influence. Anonymity under this remit will, will be the card that the wealthy and the powerful hide behind. Boris Johnson doesn't like the idea that those suspected of serious crimes will be protected if they have a reputation to protect. So he's, he, he be believes that it should either be a blanket for all or not at all. Buckland's suggestion comes after the trial and conviction of Carl Beach, who, anon who anonymously falsified accused senior political figures of sexual abuse and murder 
the case has reignited the debate over whether those accused of sexual offences should be named before they're charged. So, how long does it take for someone to be charged and how long should the individual be anonymised for? That's another thing, you know, you pick them up, you say you can't name them, how long for? I guess if they're never charged, they're never named, but it will get out there at some point. Executive Director Ian Murray said it is absurd to suggest that in a liberal democracy we are going to create a system of justice that enables the rich, the powerful and celebrities, celebrities to be protected when they are under investigation for serious crimes, but the ordinary man or woman would be offered no such protection. What would exist is a state of affairs where the actions of the police when investigating and arresting citizens cannot be reported on by the media. This is surely one of the worst aspects of a tot totalitarian state. Ed Grange, partner at C criminal defence law firm Corker Binning, said, The thought that such anon anonymity would only apply to those that have a reputation to protect would risk alienating those who are not rich and famous and who find themselves caught up in the criminal justice system. Anonymity in legal proceedings is when the press and or the public are not permitted to name certain individuals. This can happen in all types of legal proceedings, but, in, but we are focusing on criminal cases. Anonymity in these cases usually involves the defendant, that is the person accused of committing a crime, though it can also be given to witnesses too. There is a general rule that the press are not allowed to report the name of a child defendant appearing before a youth court, i.e. for non-serious crimes committed by children aged between 10 and 17. However, for more serious crimes like the kidnapping case, the judge decides whether the child remains anonymous. For adults, the general rule is that defendants are named. This is because traditionally exposure has seen as one of the prices paid for committing a crime. So you expose somebody even though they may not be guilty and ruin them completely under the assumption that they're guilty. That's why they stopped um, capital punishment. They stopped executing people because they executed them only to find out they weren't guilty. How can you have that on your conscience? And then they're talking about bringing it back. I tell you, if they bring that back, Black people are finished. A judge can grant an adult defendant anonymity under Section 11 of the Contempt of Court Act 1981, where that appears necessary. When, when might a judge grant anonymity to an adult? This might happen when a judge is worried about an alleged offender's safety if they are named under the Human Rights Act, 1998, Act 1998. Judges must ensure that the human rights of those appearing before them are protected, including the right not to suffer degrading or inhuman treatment. And the thing is, when these judges know that a black man has been accused of rape, they know what's going to happen to him if he goes into a prison cell, especially if he, that he's accused of raping a white woman. He's finished. And yet, is he going to anonymise him? No. So this is a load of bull. It's selective. So if, for example, a judge was worried about a person accused of being a sex offender would be beaten up by his neighbours, if his name got out, then the judge might choose to anonymise the defendant to protect him. But oh no, they don't do that to black people. They get beaten, they get tortured, they get lynched. Especially back in the day. It's terrible what they did, when, only to find out that it was a lie. And the thing is, when um, these people um, are caught lying and you ask them, why did they lie? It's some stupid excuse. Oh, well, I was angry at the time. The person's dead. The person's doing time. The person's life is ruined just because you had a moment of anger and malice and revenge. So you tell a lie? knowing that that person's life is in danger. And that's what they reckon 20% of the women said they, didn't, they don't know why they lied. 
when a black man was a, when they accused a black man of raping them. They don't know why they lied. There are strict rules regulating punishment for criminals in the UK. It would be unfair and often a breach of person's human rights to allow people to suffer an additional punishment stemming from society's treatment towards those criminals. Um, a lie has serious implication. And the thing is, the difference between a lie and a false allegation is a lie um, a false allegation is a combination of the lie and the truth, which makes it sound more convincing. And that's why it's more dangerous. A lie is just as dangerous. But um, they reckon that why people give false allegation, the main reasons is revenge, to retaliate, get, to retaliate against a disliked person by damaging the reputation, freedom or financing. Sometimes they um, make a false allegation to get attention an attempt to receive any kind of attention, positive or negative, at an attempt to get sympathy, a special kind of attention seeking where the complainant tries to improve a personal relationship with a specific individual, so they have a false allegation, a disturbed mental state. This may include false memories, sexual hallucinations or pathological lying. Relabeling, consensual sex is labelled as rape to the police because of its disappointed, shameful character. Dr. Zutta et al. argued that a distinction should be made between some acts during a consensual sex encounter that the participant did not want or had no desire to engage in, but nonetheless gave consent, e.g. to please their partner, on the one hand, and rape, non-consensual sex, on the other. But that may let, but that, me, but that many lay, that may lay to, but many do not make this distinction and confuse the two. That sounded really bizarre. Anyway, it is often when accounts of such unwanted consensual sex are told to friends and families that the latter interpret it as rape and put the complainant under pressure to file an allegation. And then you have regret after having consensual sex, the complainant experiences negative feelings and disgust and shame, and she decides to call it rape. I mean, we're not to, we're not putting down genuine rape cases. That's not what this is about. Um, this is this is referring to false allegations where women have actually admitted to lying, to the, you know, to say uh, lying and saying the man didn't really rape them, and they don't know why they said that they did, and these are the reasons that they gave for why they lied. So this isn't just an excuse um, thing. This is a study that this Dr. Zutter did in 2017 and said 20% of the complainants said they didn't know why they had filed a false allegation. Anyway, um, I don't know what you think about anon anonymizing those who are rich and wealthy and leaving the poor people like me and you to suffer the consequences, suffer the degradation and the humiliation and our, our reputation doesn't matter because we're just ordinary people. So yeah, I'm sorry I did this over again, if you saw the first one, and um, yeah, I really had to change it for a reason, just to give me peace of mind. Okay, and that's all for now. Bye-bye.